Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett. I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so we can all start off this week the right way with scripture and prayer. Today, let's explore how to reach our potential in Christ as I share some words to the wise as I comment on Proverbs 3 verses 1 through 12. This passage reads, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof, for the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. We are all familiar with the old saying, a word to the wise is sufficient, and Proverbs is certainly full of words to the wise. Today we want to look at five of them, which we find in our scripture passage, which is Proverbs chapter 3. The first word, to the wise is remember. A good memory is a good thing, but in this case, Solomon is talking about remembering God's Word. The Scriptures are our guidebook for life and our map for walking with God. We're to study it. We're to live by it all the days of our lives. To do that, we must hide it in our hearts and in our minds. Our culture today rejects God's Word. And really, anyone who holds a high view of Scripture can be described as a wild-eyed fundamentalist by certain people on social media. But really, what does the Scriptures tell us that the result of remembering the Bible is? When we live by God's wisdom, we can find favor with both God and man. That's what happens when we Remember God's word. The next word to the wise is trust. We must live by trust, but in whom should we have that trust? Well, we can't trust ourselves because we are weak and limited, and we can't trust others because they are the same. We can't trust science or technology either because, see, they're made by humans, which are weak and limited. They're, they're helpful, but they're not fully trustworthy. The only one we can truly trust is God. One of my pastors, the pastors that 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 uh, the pastor that married my wife and I, that did the wedding ceremony for my wife and I, he always said that he was human and he would fail us, but that God never would. He would hide behind God's word because God's word would never fail us either. Our pastor might fail us. Our friends might fail us. Our employers might fail us. Science might fail us but God never will. So we must trust God. But how do we trust God? With all our hearts. We don't need to be like the man who was afraid to fly. And so when he got on the airplane, he didn't put all his weight on a seat, but instead pushed down on his <laughs> on, the, uh, on, on the armrest to keep from... No, he was being silly. Instead of sticking our toe in the water of faith, what we need to do is dive in head first. When we exercise that kind of faith, when we acknowledge Him in all our ways, then He will direct our paths. The third word to the wise in Proverbs 3 is fear. Sadly, today people are not afraid of very much. Children aren't afraid of their teachers or their principals. Criminals don't fear the police or the courts. And frankly, God is not feared much today either. He's not given the respect and reverence he is due. Satan is a roaring lion, but God's law has teeth. Satan cry, tries to intimidate us, but God is truly the infinite and omnipotent God of the universe. He deserves to be feared. 
So what happens when we reverently fear God? Well, first, we will depart from evil and its corrosive effects on our lives, and therefore, we'll be healthy and happy in all our ways. Even Christians who are spared the eternal death that sin brings must fear God to avoid the human consequences of our sin. Another word to the wise in this passage is honor. How do we honor people? Well, we give them awards like the Oscars or like a a medal in the military. We honor people by giving them gifts and money too. But the best way to honor them is by giving them our allegiance. Solomon instructs us here that the best way to honor God is to give him our allegiance also, which is at a different level than any human allegiance. We need to offer Him our money, our time, our talent, our very souls. We need to give Him the credit He is due, and we need to honor Him. He deserves our honor. And when we give it to Him, we are blessed beyond measure. The fifth and final word to the wise in Proverbs 3 is love. The bottom line in this passage is that God loves us, and He cares for us, and He wants the best for us, and so He corrects us. He guides us. He, in some translations, chastises us, not to hurt us, but to love us and to protect us. It is incumbent upon us to understand that love, to accept his corrections, and to allow him to nurture us. In many ways, God's love reminds me of a lifeguard. Lifeguards want to save drowning people but they need for drowning people to let them do their work. We we need, if we're drowning, need to let the lifeguards save us. And God loves us, and we should let Him the same way that we need to let a lifeguard save us when we're drowning. So Proverbs 3 has some words to the wise. Remember, trust, fear, honor, love. Have we made these a part of our daily lives? Solomon would tell us that wise men, wise people do just that. So now let's turn to a time of prayer. Let's begin with some requests from my local ministry at Covington Baptist Association. Each week we're praying for a different church in our association. This week we're praying for Lockhart Baptist Church and their interim pastor, Mike Flowers. They are searching for a pastor, and he's guiding them in that process. So pray God will bless uh, them in that effort. And thank you for praying for our churches, and continue to pray for them, especially those without pastors. We want to pray for our counselors, Jen and Alicia, as they work with with their clients who are residents in our county. We want to pray for Kelly, Katie, Nancy, and Cindy as they lead our volunteers at our Christian service centers. We pray for Pat and Robin at our book and gift shop. We also pray for Wayne Linton, our office manager, and uh, all the work that he does to keep uh, all all the plates spinning in our ministry. We pray for uh, a fellow ministry, Crossover Ministry, their board of directors as they recover from a recent fire in their facility. And also, on a broader scale, we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and Jerusalem, uh, for sustenance for the people of Gaza, peace for the people of Haiti, and we want to pray for our vacation Bible schools. Our churches are having vacation Bible schools all the month of June and probably into July as well, and we pray that they have great schools, that the teaching goes well and the missions and all the activities go well, the music goes well, but we pray that we would be able to follow up with these children and their parents, that many boys and girls and their mothers and fathers would become Christians and disciples of Christ. Because Jesus said the best way to help people is for them to know God and to become disciples, because that's our mission, to make disciples of all peoples. We pray for summer mission trips that are being planned and, and are now being executed as well. I just talked to someone in my office this morning that this week are taking a a, a mission trip to New Orleans. But there's there are mission trips going on all over the world, all over the United States, as churches obey God's command to be witnesses to the uttermost parts of the world. We pray that God will bless them in that effort and that they would be fruitful and they would also stay safe. 
This week, we're also praying for the annual meeting of the Southern Baptist Convention that's being held this week in Indianapolis. And there are many, many important decisions going to be made by that group of messengers from Southern Baptist churches. So pray for them to make wise decisions under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, decisions that can be executed and that will lead us to being fruitful for God to make disciples of all peoples everywhere. Now, may God give you a good week and may you feel his blessings every day. Pray with me. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord to make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. I hope you all have a good Monday morning and a great week to come, and I hope to see you again soon on another good Monday morning.